All right, we're going to talk about, uh, <clears throat> this is still pace 1110, which is the second pace of geometry. And uh, we're going to look at the challenge problem on page 22. Page 22, and uh, they have a diagram that looks like this. And they give us some given statements. And then we're supposed to prove that these two down here, AB and DE, are congruent. All right. So I'm going to talk through this. I'm not going to write everything up here. But number one is you just take this information, write it down, and that's given, right? That part's easy. Now, the second one is already partially filled in. It says 1 and 3, and then there's a line. 2 and 4, and then there's a line. And then the statement is blank. The adjacent um, angles formed are always supplementary. Now, if you don't remember what those first words are, go back to the, um, what's it called? <laughs> the little notebook that you're keeping that has all of the, the definitions and the postulates and, and everything. And if you look back at that, and it even tells you there's postulate 9. And you can find the missing words to fill in. But basically, I think it says if a line meets a line, the adjacent angles formed are always supplementary. And so we would say that 1 and 3 are supplementary. 2 and 4 are supplementary. Now remember what supplementary means. <clears throat> if two angles come together, let me just illustrate this real quick. If two angles come together and form a right angle, we say they're complementary. That's pretty light. It's going to be hard to read that. Okay? And if two angles or come together to form a straight line, then we say they are supplementary angles. So up here, you can see in the diagram, 1 and 3 meet at a line. So these two are supplementary. 2 is supplementary to 4. All right. So you're with me so far. We got those done. Number 3 is the one that is just kind of left wide open, and you're wondering, OK, what do I do there? Let's come back to that. Uh, we're going to do number, number four next. It gives us a clue in the statements. It says that vertical angles are congruent. I want to first mark this is given, that these two are congruent, and it's given that BC is equal to or congruent to EC. All right, now the statement we just made is that two angle, these two angles are supplementary, but we haven't stated yet anything more about that. But now we're saying that vertical angles are congruent. Let's see if we can find some vertical angles in the diagram. This angle is vertical to this angle, but that's not really going to help us, is it? But what if I do this angle is congruent to this angle because of vertical angles? Okay? So I could say ACB and... D, C, E, okay, those angles are congruent, and it's obvious from the diagram, first of all, that they are vertical. I don't need to state that they're vertical angles. That is an obvious thing, but now I can go right away using postulate 12 and say that the vertical angles are congruent, okay? So we know that. Now, it looks like the next statement is trying to prove that the triangles are congruent, and then the last statement is the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. But we have that one missing step, okay? So let's look at our postulates from last pace and look back at postulate um, 11, I think it is. <clears throat> and do you notice that postulate 11 says that um, angles, let's see, how is it worded? Angles that are supplementary to congruent angles are congruent. So we can say angles that are, and we can abbreviate it, supplementary to congruent angles are congruent. Okay? Or we could even just, rather than use the word there, are congruent. So we're using some abbreviations and symbols to kind of summarize that postulate 11. So if 
angles that are supplementary to congruent angles are congruent, then which two angles are congruent? Well, I would say this angle here, I'm going to use triple and triple because these already, we used a single arch. Here we use two to indicate for the vertical. So I'm going to use three arches to indicate that those angles are congruent. All right, now we can say that the two triangles are congruent. This triangle here, you see that, is congruent to this triangle. And let's see if you can figure out why. Is it ASA, SSS? Hmm. Well, we have two angles. And a side, is it angle, side angle? Uh, actually, it's not, okay? Because the side that's congruent is not included between the two angles that are congruent. So we can't do angle, side, angle. But <clears throat> we do have a side. So we can say angle, angle, side, all right? And that would prove that the triangles are congruent. Once the triangles are congruent, now we can take any two parts. These are the two parts we're trying to prove are congruent. And uh, we can use that long code about corresponding parts. All right. I didn't write all the answers down for you, but I think we talked about it enough that you can go back to your pace now and uh, look at the diagram, fill in the blanks, and uh, hopefully you did well on this one.